Well, we want to welcome you to the broadcast today. It's Wednesday, October the 6th, 2021. It's a beautiful day. I hope you're having a great day where you are. Happy Wednesday, everyone. This is midweek service time for us at Calvary Baptist Church, and we're excited about uh, about getting the opportunity to meet tonight as God's family and God's people. And so if you don't have any plans of being anywhere, I want to encourage you to come out and be with us at Calvary. We'd love to have you. Our service begins at 7 o'clock tonight, and uh, the doors will be open much sooner than that. And we love coming a little early for time of fellowship. It's just us. Not everybody has to do this, but we'll have the lemonade chilled and the coffee perking. And uh, and I encourage you to come and hang out in the bookstore a little while and fellowship. And then the service, as I said, will start at 7 p.m. And so looking forward to a great time in the Lord's house tonight. And uh uh, typically, Wednesday night is a uh, simple format. We're going to sing a little while. We're going to emphasize missions. And then we will spend some time in prayer. And then, of course, a little time in the Word of God tonight. And I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do. And I hope that you'll come and, and be with us. Our physical address, as you can see on your screen there, is uh, Calvary Baptist Church, 300 Indian Hill Road, Union Grove, North Carolina, 28689. We say that the difference is worth the distance. And so I want to encourage you to come. Many of our folk drive from distances and some from great distances away. And uh, my wife and I have the privilege of living in the Statesville area. I told someone the other day, they said, man, y'all live in Statesville? (laughs) I said, man, we've made that trip so many times. We just get in the car and our car knows where to go. And so uh, anyway, the difference is worth the distance. We'd love to welcome you tonight. And if you're uh, a visitor, be sure you come by and shake our hand. We would love to welcome you and visit with you. Listen, if you just can't be there tonight physically, we have our live stream and and we're doing our best to uh, uh, take the live stream to the next level. And so I want to encourage you to, to uh, come be back on here tonight. Our Calvary Baptist Church of Union Grove Facebook page uh, will be airing on Facebook, also on YouTube uh, simultaneously tonight. And so... Uh, if you can't be there physically, then hop on with us on the live stream. And uh, man, folks are, are tuning in. We're thankful for that. We had viewers watching all the way from Australia, Australia the other day. And uh, that's incredible. We thank the Lord for that. Well, listen, listen, let me do some shout outs quickly. And if you're watching, let me encourage you to like and share the broadcast. Also, let me encourage you to comment if you'd like to. We'd love to recognize you on the air. And I know you don't do it for that reason. Uh, but I encourage you to to do that. Let me go ahead and find out who's aboard, and then we'll go uh, a little further today. Brother Eugene's watching uh, from uh, West Jefferson, I believe you said. Eugene, welcome aboard. Um, Karen Hoffman is with us today. Karen, good to see you. Looking forward to seeing you in a little while. Miss Patsy Bird is watching. Patsy, great to have you watching today. Thanks for tuning in. The Gillies are with us. We welcome Donnie and Tamara. It's good to see you guys today. Um uh, Will Gandy's back on here with us today. Will, good to see you. And uh, hey, praying for you folks. It's good to see you, Will. God bless you. Uh, Brother Abel Seat says he's watching from Italy. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, uh, Abel and Lauren, they're watching from Epcot today. Down in, They're down in sunny Florida suffering for Jesus today. And so we welcome Abel and Lauren, and I was trying to think of something Italian, but I, it, it slips my mind right now. So, uh, Abel, you'll have to supply the Italian words there for me, all right? Uh, let's see here. Phyllis Hudson's watching today. Phyllis, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in today. God bless you. Uh, Melissa Bulin, uh, Melissa, good to see you today, and I hope you and Johnny are having a great day, and I hope your dad is doing okay today. Almeida Campbell is with us today. Almeida, so good to have you on the broadcast. Thanks for for tuning in today. Uh, The Hooks are watching from Morganton, North Carolina. Barry, Christine, God bless you folks. It's good to see you aboard today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Judy Calloway is watching today. Judy, so good to have you on the broadcast. Thanks for tuning in to Countdown. Lord bless you. Let me see here. I see Barry. Barry Hooks is on here with us. Barry, good to see you today. God bless you. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed anybody. There's Michelle Hoots. Michelle, good to see you. Welcome aboard, you and the children. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Harrison Wobiru. Harrison, watching from Kenya. Good to see you, Harrison. And hope you and your wife are having a blessed day today. 
So good to see you. Drusilla Mendoza is on here with us today. Drusilla, we welcome you. Thank you. And it's good to see you. And I hope Martin's having a good day. And it's great to see you tuning in. Let's see, uh, Harrison Dale. Harrison, God bless you. How are you and Elizabeth today? I hope you're having a blessed day today, Harrison. Good to see you. God bless you. Uh, Abel says I'm str- <laughs> Abel says I'm struggling with Italian too, preacher. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, Polyvu Francais. That's not Italian. That's French. That's French. And Como se llama? That's uh, that's Spanish. And so Abel, I'm waiting on it, man. Come on, come through with some Italian today. Uh, good to see you. Uh, good to see you today. Well, listen, that's some of the ones that I can see. There may be others that I can't. We've got a good crowd on here, by the way. And so Countdown family, help me welcome folks aboard as they're tuning in. If I missed you, I didn't mean to. I'm just scrolling back to make sure I didn't miss anybody. And uh, anyway, it's great to see you aboard today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me see if I can take us to the split screens today. And I want to make mention, of course, of the book giveaway Uh, We promoted this yesterday. Our son, Brother Zach Pope, just came out with a brand new book called Songs in the Storm. And we gave a number of these away to our congregation on Sunday. And uh, it's a handy little book, handy little book size. And so, uh, listen, if you'll like and share the broadcast starting yesterday and do it again today, and then Lord willing, we will uh, give the book away tomorrow. I have my beautiful little redhead go through. She'll get all those names together of those who've shared the broadcast, and we will give away the book Songs in the Storm, Lord willing, tomorrow on the broadcast. And so, now don't forget what we said. According to your privacy settings, you may want to just comment in the comment section that you have shared. Every once in a while, when we go on there to find out who has shared the broadcast, because of the way Facebook works, it doesn't let us see all of those who've shared. So you may want to just comment, all right? And that's probably one of the safest ways to do that. And that way we'll make sure that uh, we get your name in there for the book, all right? Well, praise the Lord. Hey, we want to, again, hope to see you tonight for the midweek service at 7 p.m. Excited about what the Lord is going to do tonight. And so I hope that you'll be there with us. We're talking about why confession is necessary. So go ahead and grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn over to Psalm 51. We were using Psalm 51 yesterday. Now, we don't forget what we said, because uh, this will tie into uh, the lesson here in just a few moments. We said that Psalm 51 and 2 Samuel chapter 12 are uh, sort of joined together. We know that 2 Samuel 11 uh, is where David falls into very deep sin. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, he's confronted by the prophet Nathan, and David begins that long journey of getting right with God. In Psalm 51, we see David writing the psalm, uh, and it's in Psalm 51 that we have the opportunity and the privilege of looking into David's life as David is getting right with the Lord, and he's confessing his sin to the Lord. Now, yesterday, you if you were on the broadcast, you know that we learned about two different things. Number one, we learned about judicial forgiveness. When we are born again into the family of God, we receive that judicial forgiveness. We are imputed the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Jesus, in essence, takes our sinful record and gives us his clean record. And so our sins are forgiven. But then we learned about 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we learned about relational forgiveness yesterday or positional forgiveness yesterday. And we said that uh, even after we're saved, it's important that we confess our sins so that we keep that fellowship where it needs to be. We don't want that fellowship to be broken. Now, uh, doctrinally speaking, that relation... Uh, us and our Heavenly Father cannot be broken. It cannot be severed. But that fellowship, that fellowship can be uh, can be broken. And so that's that's where confession comes in. So important that we keep our sins confessed and right with God, so that that line of fellowship is is never hindered. Nothing between my soul and the Savior is what we mentioned yesterday. Now, why is confession necessary? Let's go a step further to now. I love this subject that we're talking about today. Number next is this. Confession cultivates honesty. Confession cultivates 
honesty. Now, how many know that God desires his children to be honest? Now, truth of the matter is, you and I may never be super Christian. Uh, you're watching today, you say, Pastor, I'll never be a, an evangelist. I may never be a missionary. Uh, we'll be uh, uh, honoring some of our missionaries tonight in the service. And you say, Pastor, I'll never be a foreign missionary. I, I, I may never be a pastor. I may never be, you know, a, uh, uh, a well-known evangelist or something like that. And, and, and that's true. And God knows that too. But I would say this, but we can be honest. We can be honest. We may never be super Christians, but we can be honest. We can do that. We can be honest children of God. Let me give you a few references today, if I could, on your screen. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 17, uh, and it's verse 17. I've got Romans 12, 7 on your screen, and that's a, that's a typo. I'm sorry. It's verse number 17. The Bible says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. How about 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 21? The Bible says, Providing for honest things things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Now, again, I think the uh, the the important thing there is this, that it's, it's important that we're not only honest with God, but we're honest with those around us. We're honest with men. Well, how many know there's so many hypocrites today? Uh, they're, they're one way at church. They're another way at work. And, uh, you know, that they're that one day a week Christian. That's not honest. We ought to be at work what we are at church. We ought to be at home what we are at church. We say this all the time at Calvary Baptist Church. The thing that's destroying our youth today is that double standard where parents act one way at the house of God, another way at home, or another way at church. Listen, that's not honest. That's dishonest. And God seeks for his children to be honest people. How about 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 12? The Bible says, having your conversation. And whenever you see that word conversation in your King James Bible, that word conversation is the idea of lifestyle. Not necessarily your speech, although that's included in that. But it says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now, again, the point being this, that confession cultivates honesty. When we are willing to confess, it cultivates an honest heart. Now, I'll take you back to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and Psalm 51. Again, those two are tied together. We know, we know that when David fell into sin, it's in 2 Samuel chapter 11, he began to try to cover his sin up. He didn't want to confess. He didn't want to fess up, as we say. And we notice in 2 Samuel uh, chapter number 11 that David begins that, that dishonest downward spiral. Y'all remember that story where the Bible says that in an attempt to cover his sin, he begins to act dishonestly. He begins to remember he gets Bathsheba pregnant. And what does he do? He tries to make it seem like that the baby belongs to Uriah, her husband, Nothing could be further from the truth. That wasn't Uriah's baby. That was David's baby. That was his adulterous baby. That baby that was that was uh, uh, was the fruit of a, uh, an, a of an adulterous relationship. We know that. To remember the story where he tries to get Uriah, who was an honorable man, by the way. He tries to get Uriah drunk so he'll go down and sleep with his wife so maybe he can cover up his sin. Again, the idea of just dishonest act after dishonest act. And then, of course, uh, the, the uh, straw that broke the camel's back, he sends the, the letter by uh, sends the letter to Joab, and he says to Joab, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and, and then retire from him that he may be smitten and die. Again, I've got to do something to try to cover my sin up is what David's trying to do. Again, dishonest act after dishonest act after dishonest act. Why? Because he did not want to confess. He didn't want to come clean. Listen, church, no wonder, no wonder the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. Listen to this. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Wow, what a verse. Man, I gotta read that again. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. 
but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Even when you have fallen into deep, dark sin, if you're willing to confess it, there's hope. There's hope. And God's willing to take that, that Christian and he's, will, he's able to rebuild their life. And, he, and by the way, he is willing to use them again. And he did with David. Although David really messed up, he was able to use David again. Well, we're very pro Second Amendment at Calvary Baptist Church. And a lot of our folk carry concealed weapons. And, uh, and I do myself at times. And uh, the uh, concealed carry, you know, manufacturers all the time, they're, they're, they're trying to come out with you know, new holsters and, and new ways of uh, uh, carrying concealed weapons to try to make it where it's easier and it's uh, more convenient, it's less conspicuous. But all of you folks who carry a concealed weapon know this is the truth, that, you know, uh, you can come up with better holsters and all those things, but if you're carrying a concealed weapon, you know it. You know you know it. You know why? Because sometimes they're heavy, sometimes they're cumbersome, sometimes they stick in your back, sometimes they stick in your waist, and if you're carrying a concealed weapon, you know it. And you say, Brother Pope, what's your point? My point is if you're carrying concealed sin, you know it. You know it. You know why? Because it sticks you and it reminds you and it's hard to get it off your mind. And that's why, my dear friend, it is so important for us. And I include myself in, in that. It's so important for us to make confession a part of our life. By the way, that's exactly what we find David doing. Did, did, you, did you turn over to Psalm 51? Look at Psalm 51 and verse number one. Uh, and we notice this. We know that we notice that David turns from concealment to confession. Oh, this is so sweet. Hey, skip down to verse number three. Psalm 51 and verse number three. The psalmist said, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. He said in verse number six, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh, boy, David goes from concealment to confession. By the way, when he begins to confess his sins, that's when he begins to make that upward movement again. That's when God begins to work in his life and God begins to show him mercy once again. Someone said confession is the Christian agreeing with God and that often a refusal to confess is a refusal to admit wrong. Boy, that's so true, isn't it? Hey, let me end with this statement. Confession cultivates honesty and God blesses honest Christians. Wow, wow, wow. Now that's a simple little lesson, but the man, that is so true. That is so, so true. Confession cultivates honesty and God blesses honest Christians. Well, hey, listen, I'm glad you tuned in today. I want to put some numbers on your screen today, if I could. It's our prayer helpline number, 704-327-5662, 704-327-5662. If you're watching this broadcast today and we can help you or pray with you in any way, I want you to call that number. If no one answers immediately, leave a callback number. Myself or one of our wonderful prayer helpline workers will try to get back with you. If you're watching this broadcast today, especially, and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you're not sure, 100% sure that you're going to heaven, I want you to call us, and we want to reach out to you, and we would love, we'd count on an honor to talk to you about the Lord. If you're watching this broadcast today, and you've got a heavy burden, give us a call, and we would love to pray with you over that burden. And then all of our countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. It's Wednesday. It's midweek service time. And we're looking forward to our service tonight at 7 o'clock. I hope that you'll be with us. And we're looking forward to what the Lord is going to do. Listen, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the same time. God bless you and have a great day.